Hey everyone, I hope you're gonna enjoy this video where we got 10 interesting facts about Tusken Raiders. Number one, mutant Tuskens. All the way back from the second 1975 draft of Star Wars, the name Tusken has existed. They were mentioned as being part of the Empire's soldiers. By the third draft, they had become the desert natives that rode on giant panthers. Also known as sand people, they were designed by Ralph McQuarrie who considered them to be mutated humanoids, which is why he gave them the goggles, mouthpieces, and filters that they wore as a consequence of those mutations. From Breaking Mules did sound designer Ben Burt discover the Tusken Raiders' distinctive wails which made the desert dwellers even more frightening when they attacked Luke. Number 2. They got much more respect in the prequels. Though the original trilogy gave us a memorable introduction to the Tuscans, they only made one appearance in any of the first three films. It was first in the prequels the mysterious species was given a more significant contribution to play. We saw them shooting at the pod racers during the Boon to Eve classic on Tatooine in The Phantom Menace. Then of course, there was the Tusken Raider tribe that Anakin Skywalker slaughtered, which was such a pivotal moment in the young Jedi's turn to the dark side of the Force in Attack of the Clones. Though they aren't physically present in Revenge of the Sith, Palpatine does bring the Tusken Raiders up to Anakin after he decapitated Count Dooku on General Grievous's dreadnought, the Invisible Hand. The Dark Lord wanted to remind the Jedi about his murder of the Sand People and their tribe after what they did to his mother. Number three. They are a warrior culture. One of the Tuscan tribes was led by a skilled marksman and hunter who did not fear the technology of Tatooine settlers. The great warrior's name was Urorur. Seriously, U R O R R U R apostrophe R apostrophe R. Even though he was their chieftain, he still led his clan directly in raids against moisture farmers for their water and scouted the Jund land wastes for any wayward travelers to dispense with. His bantha had also a special name, Rur, R R R, apostrophe U R, apostrophe R. Try to say it for yourself. He had been the alpha male of his herd before it had been taken in by the tribe. The Banthas were very precious to the Tuscans, and they were tended to by the Rurur, who was also an authority on how to use the Tuscans' traditional Gederfi stick. He was the Tuscan who attacked and almost killed and startled Luke Skywalker. Then there was the tribe's wildcard, a Tuscan the other members considered too rash, Ururur. He was a very aggressive warrior who tended to wander far off their tribal territory, all the way to Mos Espa, just to raid some moisture farmers. Then again, he also liked talking to his Gaderfi stick. So, who knows? Regardless, his behavior made the tribe think he was too unreliable for leadership. Number 4. Why they actually hate pod racing the reason they shot at the pod racers during the Boon to Eve classic was because the Moss Espa Grand Arena had been engineered around one of their sacred rocks, Timto Pegalis. I'm probably saying that wrong, sorry Tuscans out there, but the Vecnoid pod racer paid the price for his sacrilege when the Tuscan managed to shoot him down. Fun bonus fact here, the name Tuscan Raider is actually first mentioned in episode 1 The Phantom Menace. Back in A New Hope, they were just called Sand People. Number 5. I Come in Peace the book, The Galactic Phrase Book and Travel Guide, teaches that the standard greeting for peace that Tuscans give each other is ya ya. However, when you say that greeting, it's best if you lower your pitch as much as possible. So let's try it again. Ya yeah, ya. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna sound like an idiot here, but Rurarusha. If I didn't butcher it too badly, it should mean I come in peace. Huraka is I surrender. Among the few beings in the galaxy that ever really tried to communicate with the Tusken Raiders was anthropologist Mamon Hul, a male Shiido who was also a geneticist. Now he was trying to escape the guilt from a past mistake, and he managed to infiltrate a Tusken clan and study their culture. Number 6. How they got their names. In legends, their name comes from Fort Tusken, an early Old Republic mining settlement situated on Tatooine. The Sand People overwhelmed the settles within Fort and either captured or killed everyone inside and from that moment on, people started to refer to them as Tusken Raiders. But what they called themselves may actually be Gorfas, but it's still unclear. Regardless, the desert nomads might also share common ancestry with the Jawas. It appears that both native Tatooine species evolved from the technology advanced Kumumga, who were wiped out by the Rakata long ago. Number 7. They had female leaders. 
A female Tuscan chieftain named Ayark was the aunt of Asharadhet, the Jedi Tuscan raider turned Sith Lord Darth Krayt. She had just one eye, but had replaced the missing one with a red crystal. Several encounters with Ben Kenobi and warned her tribe about the powerful shaman during his self-imposed exile on Tatooine. She is so far the only female tribal leader that has been depicted in lore, both a warrior and leader. In her old age, she, Ayark, pondered about her people's raiding and pillaging lifestyle. Number 8. Anakin Skywalker Saves a Tuscan now you might be scratching your head, but Anakin actually, when he was a slave on Tatooine, back in episode 1, was ordered by his owner, the Toydarian Watto, to trade with Jawas out in the desert. The young boy obeyed, but part way there, he and C-3PO came across a wounded Tuscan. Anakin ignored the horror stories he has heard about their kind, and instead helped the injured native keeping him company. Anakin stayed at the sand person's side all the way through the night, only to wake up and be greeted by surrounding Tusken raiders. However, instead of attacking, they collected their hurt tribesmen and simply left the bewildered Anakin behind. This whole incident showed Anakin's capacity for good and kindness, even for a stranger, even for one he had heard horror stories about. Now it's also an iconic foreshadowing of the slaughter that he would enact on one of their villages years later. Maybe the wounded Tuscan belonged to that particular tribe. The mercy they showed him would be their downfall. But then again, they shouldn't have gone after his mother. I mean, seriously. Number nine, Anakin Skywalker kills Tuscans. Wow, big surprise, I know, but hey, I had to throw it in there. Speaking of that Tuscan village, right before the Battle of Genosis, a Sand People clan kidnapped a human moisture farmer, Shmi Skywalker. When her son Anakin found her, the tortured woman died in his arms. Overwhelmed with anger and grief, the Jedi Padawan gave in to his hate and slaughtered the entire village of Tuscans. Now, if you didn't know this, in the book, it goes into extensive detail as to how Anakin actually did this. He went absolutely insane, using force speed, throwing boulders on all of them, even the children, and just tapping into the dark side for the first time. Years later, as Vader, on a mission in Tatooine for the Emperor, encountered a camp of Tuscans and again slaughtered all of them, with the exception of one Tuscan escaping, leaving the village in flames and covered in bodies. The Sith Lord, even decades later, still hated the Desert Drifters. Number 10. Some Tuscans worshipped Darth Vader. That's right, you may have seen a comic that I've covered on this. The sole survivor of Vader's wrath was discovered by another clan of Tusken raiders a short while later. Distraught and devastated, he recounted to them the horrific events he had witnessed. Then he took the other Tuscans back to the remains of his village and people. The shaman of the other tribe, fearful of angering whatever great demon had massacred the survivor's entire clan, reasoned that Darth Vader had clearly wanted all of that village's Tuscans to die. Not wishing the same fate for his own clanmates, the shaman had the lone survivor tied to a giant wooden statue made in the likeness of Vader, using twigs and branches, and set ablaze as a sacrifice for their new god, Lord Vader. Hope you enjoyed this top 10 for Tuscans and the Sand People. If you learned something new, let me know in the comments below, and if there's something that I didn't mention that you thought was pretty cool, let me know as well, and I'll cover it in another top 10 for the Sand People Part 2. Have an awesome rest of your day, throw a like on this if you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you, always.